Here at the Royal Dental Hospital of Melbourne, um, we have a wealth of knowledge on the topic of dentures, with the combined years of experience adding in the hundreds. The presentation today on copy replica or duplicate dentures is based on minimal intervention dentistry, reducing costs and appointment times for patients, helping reduce the public wait list for dentures, providing treatment with ease and comfort to the patient, also reducing auxiliary and utility costs as a flow-on effect, uh, the, and also with complex cases to produce a set of dentures that increase acceptance for, uh, for the new dentures. For us, the pleasure of marrying dental science with artistry and individuality makes our job a challenge and a pleasure at the same time. Today is an introduction on the topic, which will give you the basic awareness of this procedure and to hopefully inspire you to investigate it further. Uh, the presentation might seem a little bit clunky along the way. It's a four-hour presentation. I've had to cut it down to 45 minutes, so <laughs> that's why it'd be, it's uh, the way it is. Now, um, the materials to make a set of dentures or the ingredients to make a set of dentures are very straightforward. Dentures are made basically in the same manner. The latest craze on television is a cooking show, so we'll go through a little bit of a <laughs> session, session on how to make some dentures. Patient fronts up, we need some alginate, we pour it into the patient's mouth, a little bit of plaster and so forth afterwards to make some models, some Yellowstone and so forth to get our denture organised. But along the way, we have this special type of something special. For this particular patient, we'll pick up and put a pinch of that in there. <coughs> Close our lid, also some water. Presto, set of dentures made, fantastic. Took about three hours clinical time, we got there, patient's happy. Same recipe for another patient. Well, same ingredients in there, except this time there's something special. We've drained the box. Not so easy. The clinician is exhausted. Three hours of clinical time plus more time. The dentures are made. The two patients compare their sets of dentures. They look at them. Bit of pink plastic. Bit of white coloured plastic for the teeth. One of the patients, the second patient says, hold on, my uh, previous set felt better. I was able to eat with it, it was more comfortable, it looked better. This new set, you know, this guy's been raving on how great this new set's going to be. It doesn't feel as good as my previous set. So, patient comes back and those hours extend further and further. So the topic today is on copy, replica or duplicate template dentures construction, including some general discussion on... Um, denture issues. When it comes to copy dentures, a copy denture is never the same or 100% perfect copy of the original. There will always be a variation. The provider and patient determines where and how much through um, process of uh, materials that are used and alterations that the patient wishes to have along the way. This procedure is intended to be used for selected cases. It's not for every patient. So copy replica dentures are not a new phenomenon. If we look at dental history, you're sure to find methods and procedures. When we talk about dental history, we talk about uh, pre-computers. That's the important things to look at, um, dating back probably to the Second World War. A lot of the things in, in dentures occurred in that uh, era. Last millennium, in other words. <clears throat> changes have occurred over the years due to materials and technical changes also due to clinical and patient expectations. That patient expectation for most of us providers has been a little bit of a hiccup in the recent years. Everybody knows everything about everything on, through the internet and it makes our life just that little bit uh, harder. Um, the techniques that I've developed over the 30 years as a dental technician at Prosthetis, providing su successful copy dentures, replica dentures to patients, have uh, been quite successful and uh, rewarding along the way. 
A new patient presents for treatment and they have an existing set of dentures. Do we look at the old set of dentures as clinicians? Do we discuss with the patient issues of how successful the old set was? Who made them? How old? Praise and admire good workmanship that we see. What problems they have with the old dentures? How long have they had them for, basically? Or do we remove them from the mouth, not look at them, start treatment, tell them how great our dentures are going to be, and um, no discussions regarding all set uh, with the patients and what sort of expectations he has. Now, we know from our training that the first three points are critical in building rapport and achieving success in dentures. The fourth one is uh, lacking in rapport and also has a good... Uh, path down to failure at the end of the treatment. Now the basic criteria for copy denture technique, patient must be satisfied with current dentures. The clinician is satisfied that the current dentures have all required criteria of aesthetics, speech, function, comfort with extensions, and also that the clinician has a full history of previous materials used. Um, why patient wants a copy denture or variations and why the clinician wants copy denture or variations to that. Now, I won't be elaborating too much on these slides because, as I said, I've condensed them, uh, uh, the presentation quite a, quite a bit. Uh, some fundamentals that require understanding. So you're required to know impression methods, practicality of copy, why you're going to copy, why make changes, materials that are going to be used, method of copy, complex or easy, clinical complex, uh, complexity or easy method, depending on the clinician's skills. The laboratory skills we're not going to go into. <coughs> knowledge and use of different impression materials, lab materials and techniques. To succeed in denture construction, the knowledge and use of different impression materials along with circumstances, with oral conditions, of when these materials should be used is important. We learn through our training that there's a variety of materials available and it's not just a matter of just picking up the cheapest or the most one at hand and using it on that, on that patient, on every patient the same way. So we have to vary our materials. Therefore, the formula for increasing the, cha uh, the chance of success, especially in the difficult cases, must include the oral conditions by different impression materials, clinical lab techniques and patient-clinician rapport. Now, that last point, patient-clinician rapport, is the most critical one, critical one out of the lot, I feel. Um, you have to start building rapport from your first appointment uh, right through and end it on a nice uh, uh, finish. If you don't build a nice rapport with a patient, the smallest thing the patient will come back and keep pestering you. So important, it's very important that you build that rapport and that will increase your success rate. So the impression techniques that we use, there are three types, the mucostatic, mucocompressive and functional. There are two methods, A and B, clinician assisted and patient produced. Remembering the issue of hydrophobic and hydrophilic of water repelling or retracting impression. At times if we choose the wrong impression material you'll find it almost springs away from the patient's mouth. That's the wrong impression material to use. If you find that and you get that sensation when you're taking the impression, you have to change and use something else. And it's usually the silicon type of impression materials that will give you that response when the material is set, the denture of an upper denture, and you know the patient's got reasonable undercuts, the special tray with the impression material just basically springs away. Um, so the mucosthetic, I won't go into great detail because this presentation is designed for students more than uh, trained professionals. So the mucosthetic, we use um, trays or special trays with perforated, uh, a lot, lots of perforation. So when we're taking their impression, Against the opposing positive side, there's less compression, so it's a static type of a, an impression. The mucocompressive uh, impression procedure, again, let's look at the special tray, no perforations, so when we're pressing it up against the tissue, we get a compression, so that's how we get a compressive situation. Now, the functional clini clinician and patient assistant, that's the most... Uh, or the most favourable one to be used for dentures. It gives you the most success. It's hard to get the patients to do it, but nevertheless, it's um, the most successful. It gives you both static and compression um, at the same time. Clinician-assisted, where the clinician stimulates cheeks, lips to produce function. It's, that's not possible in the ridges. It occurs a peripheral role of dentures. 
And the patient assisted is when the patient uh, wears the denture and either wears it for a week or for 15, 20 minutes chair side to get the extension while the material is setting. Um, so that's during the impression taking when the clinician is um, clinician assisted. So we use silicon or polyvinyl rubber or Zoe, uh, zinc eugenol. The uh, clinician stimulates cheeks and lips during impression taking. Stimulation basically entails stretching and moving lips and cheeks as material is setting and it's commonly used. Remembering again the water repelling issue. The functional one as we spoke is the tissue conditioner and soft liners that are used uh, before final impression with extra light body impression material. And again, that's applied to the denture uh, for a week prior or 15, 20 minutes before the um, final impression. Now the practicality of copy, how we're going to use, how we're going to do this copy. So the materials that we're going to use that are readily available in the clinic and laboratory. So we're not going to go investing in a whole lot of other materials that aren't handy to us. So it's a straightforward procedure, easy procedure for clinician and dental te uh, technician or lab to follow. Taking in consideration practical and non-complex steps to reduce chances of mistakes from both operators, clinician and dental technician. Time required reduced due to simplicity. And why we want to copy a denture. You or other provider has made the previous dentures, the patient's very happy with them, he's come back and he wants another set that's exactly the same. Patient extremely happy, wants another spare set, he's going on holidays, he's scared he might lose them. Patient happy with everything except shade, mould. Patient old, frail, minimal changes to reduce complications. And now we start getting into why we really get to do copy dentures. Patient medically compromised, strokes, MS, oral scleroderma, microstoma, Parkinson's, oral cancers, history of psychological disorders, neuromuscular control orally, already established with old dentures, and TMJ guidance established, occlusal plan established. So this is the crit critical area that why we do uh, copy dentures in special needs or in general dentistry in the public sector, I feel. Uh, especially the oral scleroderma, microstoma. With the aged population, we see patients that the mouth is so small and very, very tight and hard tissues. So scleroderma is the hardening of uh, skin. When this condition occurs to the mouth, it can result in pain and microstoma, which basically reduces the size of the mouth opening. It causes difficulty in examination and treatment. Complexities in obtaining first, second impressions and centric registration in these cases are reduced when using the copy denture technique therefore increasing chances of success with less injury during impression taking registrations for new dentures. There's been cases where we look at these patients, let alone try to do an examination, you touch the corners of the mouth and they start to bleed already. It's very, very difficult and um, we can't, uh, as clinicians, force treatment and injure uh, patients like that. So we've got to be very careful. So this copy denture technique reduces those risks of injury. So why would we make changes? Um, lost vertical dimensions. So the dentures are 20 years old. They've lost 10 millimetres. So we need to do uh, some alterations to their uh, existing dentures. The aesthetic shade or shape of teeth as we spoke. Speech problems. Sounds not formed correctly due to teeth being in the wrong location. Incorrect occlusal plane. We've seen cases where the uh, occlusal plane is reverse curves, so and in other words, the curve is instead of going upwards, it's going backwards. Uh, incorrect ne neuromuscular control. Incorrect arch teeth location, ants, uh, anteriors and posteriors, tongues and cheeks and lips are in the way. TMJ problems, pain, noises, clicking. So they're the clinical reasons why we would make changes. Materials required for copy replica denture procedure. Alginate. Wax, lab putty, plaster, stone, semi-adjustable articulator, clear self-curing acrylic, silicone, tissue conditioner, portable Bunsen. So these materials are all, we've got all these materials. There's nothing we need to invest further um, to, to do this procedure. There are three methods that, are, that can be utilised. The following methods are only a guide. There are variations to these methods. 
We're in a profession that is scientific, technically based, and each skilled person will vary procedure to achieve desired results. The ease of complexity will keep evolving with each person and as materials change over the years. The important thing is that the practitioner is clinically able to examine existing dentures and find the positive and negative features in that denture. Areas able to explain to the patient and lab technician treatment plan and lab requirements, that's an important factor. So when you do your lab um, order, you're able to explain via the phone or in writing exactly what you want with this particular case. One of the methods is the lab putty mold technique, method one. It's quite easy, uh, used common, and I think it's used here at the hospital by the specialists. Uh, construction of lab putty mold, it's very straightforward. We measure up a little bit of lab putty, which is the amount required for, uh, for making a model. We mix with act some activator, we make our model with some key ways, bury the whole thing, the whole denture in um, lab putty. Remove the denture, check our model, uh, check our uh, mould for um, quality. This procedure will take 15 or 20 minutes uh, chair side or in-house. If you're sending it off to the dental laboratory, give them a day to do that. They'll pick it up in the morning and deliver it back in the uh, afternoon, the dentures. So we'll construct our lab putty uh, mould. Produce a cold cure duplicate uh, in the mould, which is a clear one. Articulate these duplicate dentures. So we've got these dentures made up that are clear acrylic and we articulate them. Grind the teeth off the cold cure, duplicate and allow set up basically. Set up your new teeth, same mould as previous set if you've got it on record or very similar. The denture is ready for trying. So up to this stage we're at a copy denture. We take a wash impression in hard base using light body. It should be light body. Oh, sorry, in the hard base, using the light body impression material as a rear line, making sure our centric and occlusal vertical dimension is correct. We retry if required, finish for insert. So it's a very straightforward procedure. Left party method two. For producer cold cure duplicate in, uh, in acrylic again. We take our wash impression now at this stage. So we haven't ground any teeth off. We check everything that needs to be required. Articulate the duplicate uh, dentures. Grind the teeth off at that stage. Set up new teeth. And we're ready for a try and again. Retry if required. Finish for insert. There's another method which is soapbox technique as described into the prosthetic treatment of edentulous patients. That's the book that we used when we were training back in the last millennium. So there's a lot of good stuff in there. Um, soapbox technique, we cut a slot into the soapbox on the side. Um, outline indicates approximate finish line of the first half of the mould. So in other words, we fill the first part of the soapbox with material, lab putty or alginate. I prefer to use lab putty because you can keep it as a record. Uh, you place your denture in there and you take care to make sure that the path of insertion or the path when you're opening you'll be able to get the model away from the denture. That's the only thing you need to look out for. Uh, so we use the lab putty. Make a shellac or acrylic base plate on the model. Pour wax into the mould to obtain duplicate of teeth and base. Then we take our wash impression in, in the duplicate dentures. Record our new centric if it's required. Trim the wax teeth to fit dentures, uh, to fit the teeth into the same location and we're ready for trying again. Insert the denture if everything's okay. The dent there's another process with a dental flask. Now this procedure is a little bit more uh, difficult, and especially if the flask is of a, a new one and it's not an old one, it's harder to work with and you really need to know uh, technically what you're doing with it. So I won't go into that uh, today. Um, why do we need to know and understand these techniques? Advantages and disadvantages of technique to patient, to clinician, and to laboratory. We're using methods that produce the desired results. The dental laboratory can use a variety of methods to copy, replicate dentures. Clinicians should discuss and undertake and understand procedures a dental laboratory is using. 
to the patient, advantages, very similar to old dentures, easily to adapt to new neuromuscular acceptance. It's time-saving appointments, so th th they've got to come less times to see you. Uh, discomfort during impression is reduced. Occlusal plane kept similar, reduced difficulties during eating, uh, TMJ discomfort reduced. So overall it gives you a better result at the end of the treatment. Um, the patient needs to be without the dentures for the day. There are the disadvantages. Morning appointment and afternoon to collect the denture. That's the only disadvantage that I've seen in the procedure to the patient. So the clinician requires uh, less appointments, so that's an advantage. Minimal intervention dentistry because he's doing less appointments with him. Um, reduce follow-up appointments. Increases chance of acceptance of dentures. Reduce in wait list uh, for the public sector. Accepted method of treatment with explanation to patient in dental uh, laboratory. So overall less appointments means less hassles for the patient in the waiting room. Reception staff will have less problems. Nursing staff less issues. And just overall utilities reduced. So it's a flow-on effect. Disadvantages, special training to clinician, special team effort required by clinician and dental laboratory, that's important. Chair side occlusal adjustments at insert must be checked obviously to make sure that it's similar to the old one. Lab does not always have the time due to different procedures, cost variations or lab fees possibly. So laboratory we won't go into the laboratory sector. There's another me method of copy which is a direct these of um, use of standard procedures and materials. The basic reasons why we do these methods to allow you to copy the shape of the labial uh, buccal surfaces, very important. Approximate occlusal surfaces, tooth location, size and shape of teeth, or exact if you have on record as we said earlier. Fitting area, extensions of acrylic base, similar or variations as required. The important thing on um, the laboratory side of it that uh, we have to be aware of is uh, the, the occlusal guidance or the occlusal movements of the teeth have got to be fairly similar to the old denture. The only way to uh, reproduce that that we found over the years or that I found over the years was to make a customised uh, incisal guidance plate. Fairly simple, a little bit of tray acrylic, you place it on the incisal guidance. Um, while your dentures are on the, uh, the old dentures are on the articulator and you make the lateral movements, protrusive movements on your, uh, with your denture and it, you get a, re a, re a reproduction onto the um, guidance plate. It's fairly similar to Gothic arch tracing except it's in 3D rather than a 2D uh, result. So when you set up your new dentures, uh, you follow those similar guidelines and the result will be very similar to your uh, old denture. To increase or reduce vertical dimension is required. Procedure of increase or reducing vertical dimension is nominated by the clinician and dental laboratory makes relevant adjustments to set up as per instructions. So once again, uh, the lost vertical dimension, you have a look at the dentures and you decide clinically what the patient, with discussion with the patient, what they require and you give those instructions to the laboratory and it comes back in theory as your, per your instructions. Uh, most of our special needs patients and elderly with numerous medical, physical, cognitive issues with the added possibility of uh, deteriorated neuromuscular control. They're the reasons why we copy and replicate dentures. We know the importance of good neuromuscular control when it comes to dentures. This is evident in the first time denture wearer and observing after a period of time how they improve and adapt to new shape in the mouth. So since we know that and they've adapted to that particular shape, we don't want to change it. We'll, if we can keep it fairly similar, we will. And that will make the patient adapt to the new dentures a lot easier. Uh, we spoke about that earlier on. We're going to go through some cases as well because I initially thought uh, that the presentation was going to be geared towards students as well as fully qualified <laughs> professionals. So uh, this is geared to some students. Um, so the alternative method is the direct procedure. So a new patient presents, the dentures are over 20 years old, the teeth are worn, thin bases, plates, frail patient. So the exercise for the students is to spot the mistake or error in the clinical procedure in the photographic sequence. So that's the patient's existing dentures. 
and we get them to give us the correct right and left aspect of centric occlusion uh, from the photographs. So that's what that looks like. In our first appointment, we duplicate existing dentures as study models. We take a wash impression in light body as a reline. Take a centric. Provide correct vertical dimension and give instructions to the lab technician as to opening of vertical dimensions and delegate from which the full upper or the full lower or both as required. We record our shade and mould of teeth for the lab. So that's basically a wash impression of the lower denture. We mix up some Zoe uh, for, to record our centric registration. We apply a little bit of Zoe to the occlusion of the lower denture. A little bit of Vaseline applied to the upper occlusion and we record our centric. Now the beauty about uh, Zoe is that if you muck up the first time, it's still soft. So you can take it out of the mouth, reposition it back in the patient's mouth and take a centric again. You could probably do it two or three times at the right timing. So that's an old technique that was shown to me by an old timer, so <laughs> which is great. <laughs> It wasn't you. <laughs> so that's our duplicate. You can do that either before or after the impression taken. So impressions and centric registration ready for the laboratory. Dental lab procedures, as we said, must be discussed, observed and understood by clinician as clinician is totally responsible for result. There's no going back to the, to the patient saying, look, I'm sorry, it was the dental technician's fault because these days that doesn't count. We have to say... We take all responsibility for all uh, faults and mistakes that occur as clinicians. Now, on our second appointment, we're trying the dentures. So we've gone from first appointment straight to the trying. Check all relevant areas that are known to us through our training. Make any minor changes as required. Send back to the laboratory for finish. Straightforward. So there's a wax up of our, our trying. The original dentures, you can see the teeth are worn and we've made some minor alterations as required. Dental lab procedures. This step is important for dental lab, so it's important for us to know this step as uh, clinicians. We apply a thin sheet of wax over the label uh, buckle surface of the trine, so to make sure that through the processing of uh, finishing off the denture, it's not over trimmed or uh, too thin. It just basically gives enough material for the uh, technician as he's finishing off uh, not to make the denture too thin because the, the patient will pick it, say, I've lost support, it's not supportive enough, the lips are collapsing and all these sort of things will come back, even with the smallest amount of difference. Uh, the important one is also to mount the models back on the articulator and spot grind dentures to customise a clues or guidance plate on semi-adjustable articulator for complex cases. So they're the important things that, are, that uh, we must know. So the aesthetics, follow the basic guidelines. Shade of teeth, use skin tones, hair colour and eye colour is important. Tooth shape and size. So either we do a direct copy or we change the var uh, variation at this point. Natural look versus artificial look. So we don't only look at the existing dentures and we go straight as a copy. We try to get a good history from the patient to see if they've had previous dentures, if they were happier with the previous dentures and so forth. Now with special needs patients, they may experience an increased uh, level of confidence um, when aesthetics have been achieved. When you take your history, you'll get a whole lot of information from uh, patients and it's important that you listen in the first appointment to uh, and document all this information. Eating. Uh, request to see a patient in a domiciliary setting. As you can read, hi, Anthony. Uh, the patient we're talking about is uh, so-and-so in the UR number. The patient's family member says he's not eating well. This is a common request for referral to see special needs age patients. Most people, uh, like us, we're sitting in here nice and healthy and the years roll on and go on and we have our kids and they get older, they get busier and so forth. One day we're going to knock on these doors, we're going to enter these doors of uh, nursing homes, possibly ourselves. So we're used to a particular type of uh, living and lifestyle and this is what we're going to be confronted with. Now, you haven't been eating that. So <laughs> when you're confronted with something like that, you say, cripes. No wonder, you know, the patient's not eating well. Yeah. 
Did you enjoy your lunch, by the way? <laughs> <laughs> so eating. Patients that are frail, aged, or not willing to undergo treatment. Poor oral conditions. These sort of patients have got dementia. There's a lot of uh, medical issues, so we, we're confronted with these issues when we see them in nursing homes. Poor oral conditions. High risk of injury. To try to provide uh, this type of patients with new dentures at an advanced age to improve eating ability is extremely difficult. So the expectation of the family member is for their family member, the aged parent, is to eat what they're eating, basically. It's never going to happen. So we can't force treatment on patients unless they're willing to be treated. That's very important. That the treatment that we're going to provide has a positive result. Sometimes pureed food is all that will be tolerated. And that's fact, and that's what we have to live with, and that's reality. When we see patients that are 90 years of age and they say to you, I don't want to wear my dentures, I'm quite happy the way that I am, and then you get the family member saying, make him a set of dentures, I want my dad or mum to look nice, it's very difficult for us as a practitioner to satisfy both parties. And unfortunately, we've got to go with the party that we're treating, not the party that's uh, paying or forcing us to, or referred us to the patient. So, the other aspect of feedback. Australia is also a multicultural uh, country, so food variety and options have changed. Aged special needs patients in nursing homes can become depressed if cultural food not available. So again, the family members have got to take an active role because uh, nursing home staff are quite busy with a lot of other mundane things. And obviously with um, the, aware the awareness of the nursing home, to provide these patients that are depressed with what they need for their uh, nutrients and the type of food they've been accustomed to. Uh, the important thing as providers, we have to document this information and report it to the nursing home. And it's a simple phone call to the family members and you record that as well to say, look, you know, mum or dad, uh, they're quite happy here, but they want this type of food that they're used to eating. Um, could you bring it for them, please? It's as simple as that. And you document that you've made that call. Um, we have to be serious about this migration issue, migration trends uh, and the types of food that uh, patients are eating. Uh, we're seeing that um, recent African, Afghanistan, Asian and refugee migration, these are new Australians, so we have to be prepared. Cultural, religious background must be always be considered. So we've a little bit of learning in those areas for us. Treating patients that understand um, in this age group uh, special needs is quite a difficult area to, uh, to, to deal. There's a language barrier. There's a special needs area. Uh, there's a whole lot of other little issues that are involved. And the most complex one is the patients might have different expectations of dental treatment. And I won't go into too much detail into that area, but that's quite a large area. Um, copy replica dentures as a treatment option, highly advised in my opinion in these cases. Our aim is to satisfy the clinical aspect and the patient's uh, requirements. Um, no further in my books, in, uh, in all these sort of cases. Um, when you start going further than they, uh, to their request, it makes your life a little bit harder. Um, so, so, as I said, this area seems to be a complex case and requires a team effort to resolve eating difficulties or eating disorders. Dentures are not always the issue. So we've gone to the patient, we've seen the patient, and you've examined the dentures are reasonably good sometimes, but the patient's not eating, and we've seen why. Patients with special needs might have speech difficulties. Before treatment, assess and conduct a basic speech exam and ascertain if new dentures might be of benefit in improving dentures. Or copy replica technique as a choice. Patients can become quite frustrated if new dentures interfere with speech and may give up on dentures. So in other words, if they've been quite satisfied with their dentures, if you go ahead and do something totally different with a special needs patient, you might... Uh, create a situation where the patient's not going to be satisfied and is going to give up on, on your new dentures altogether. Now, this assessment is purely a visual and listening process. The skill takes a little bit of time to learn. It's just observing where the tongue, lips and teeth um, join where the sounds have been formed. 
for the patient's fee. So we go to our third appointment, which is basically our insert appointment. We adjust the centric and laterals, which are very minor because most of the major uh, alterations have been done in the laboratory. And very important, check visit one week later. Um, if you don't do a check visit, you basically left the patient on his own and yourself in a situation where you don't know what's happened with that particular case. So uh, check visit appointment I feel is very important. We have the ability to copy, replicate beautiful functional dentures. The question is, do we in the dental industry believe there's a need or a want for this procedure? Some may believe there is, others may not. For the undecided or did not know the procedure group, the choice is yours. So these methods basically give another treatment option to patient and provider. So again, we go back to the exercise for the students. So there's the centric registration, uh, sorry, laterals and the centric registration ready for the laboratory. That's our dentures finished for the patient. New dentures in the left and right centric. We can see the upper and lower dentures, the old set and the new copy denture will replicate because they're not exactly copied. We've made some minor alterations as required. Before and after photograph, a little more lip support doesn't hurt for this patient. Smile at insert. Second case, patient presented for new dentures, existing dentures approximately 15 years old, new dentures made 100%, almost 100% textbook perfect, but patient is not satisfied due to change of appearance, eating, speech, they wanted similar to old. So the dissatisfied patient. We look at the old denture to obtain information along with patient and clinician input. We arrive at an outcome and obtain our treatment plan. The photo below shows original and new dentures patient does not like. So we can see the two sets, I hope it's, uh, yep. So that's the original set and that's the new set of dentures made. You can see the extensions are different, tooth positioning uh, and so forth. So before and after photographs with copy replica denture technique, three appointments to insert. Fairly similar to her existing uh, dentures. Few alterations that the patient wanted, a few alterations that happened without our want, but nevertheless, they <laughs> fairly close to her original um, set. We can see from um, the original set of dentures again to our copy, uh, fairly similar setup lines and extensions to her existing dentures. We can see the difference between the two sets, the first set that was made and the replica copy uh, dentures. Case three, patient presented for new full full, no history of old dentures. Rest vertical dimension was 59, so we measure the rest vertical dimension of the patient, which is at 59 of the original dentures. The occlusal vertical dimension, 43, so they've lost a lot of the vertical dimension. With the new dentures, the occlusal vertical dimension is 56. Patient not able to cope with sudden change, even though clinically textbook 100% correct. So in other words, 59 at rest, 56 at occlusion, sounds great. But the patient's not able to adapt to that. We remake dentures, the OVD, the occlusal vertical dimension is 49. So we've closed, but not as much as, uh, as a new set. Uh, patient is able to tolerate three to six millimetres at the most, I guess, occlusal vertical dimension changes. The giveaway comment from the patient, not enough space for the food between my teeth. So we can see the copy uh, lower denture with desired alterations and the upper as well. In this slide, we can see uh, the original denture and the lower that's been built up to try to provide or reduce the um, vertical dimension. So you can automatically see the difference between the height and the extensions of this denture and this denture. Now, a special needs patient and an elderly patient, such, such a sudden change would be extremely difficult to, to adapt to. So that's why we try to reduce those um, alterations. So the summary of method. The traditional practice methods require duplication of dentures, including fitting area with acrylic. Other methods work directly onto final models with wax duplicate. 
this technique in a new denture construction with the added advantage of copying good aspects of, and removing faulty ones and working with uh, wax makes it easier on the clinician and technician. Now some articles that I read while uh, researching this claim that copy dentures is a good way for students to learn how to make dentures. I thought that was an interesting uh, comment. Others explain the complexity of the process. The ease and difficulty of any dental procedure depends on the individual clinician's ability, skills and knowledge and pati uh, uh, patient being treated. I've never found an easy method in the 30 years <laughs> that I've been treating. What you have seen in uh, regards to copy dentures require that you have a full understanding of all aspects of denture uh, constructions, clinical and technological. So as clinicians, it's not a bad idea to spend a little bit of time with a technician to see the procedures that are, uh, they undergo to construct a set of dentures. Um, there are a number of clinical areas to look out for in providing successful dentures constructions. These areas can affect the success or failure in dentures. As positives and negatives, the key areas can be categorised in seven main groups. Retention, stability, aesthetics, occlusion, speech, class set up one, two or three, uh, if you get that wrong, you're in trouble. Set up patient's ability and clinician's ability. Uh, it, within those seven areas, if you look at every individual point in denture construction, they can add up to about anywhere from 150 individual points plus. So there's a lot of areas to look into uh, in, you know, when there's a problem with dentures or, um, or when things are good, you've got to be able to be able to see all those points. The chair side appointment schedule, comparison of procedures. The conventional method requires for a clinician approximately 180 minutes or three hours. Your first appointment is you know you take your impressions, your history, second impressions, registrations, trying, delivery insert of dentures and sixth appointment is your check visit and you resolve any issues at that session. That's the conventional method. Uh, your copy denture method 120 minutes so we've knocked off a little bit of time. Chair side which will give us some more time for more patients as required. So we'll do our first appointment, uh, final impression, registration, history and so forth. Second appointment we'll go straight to a trying and third appointment delivery instead of dentures if things are correct. Um, fourth appointment which is critical is the check visit and sort any minor little issues. Now it might seem easy to copy and restore or construct new dentures but to also have the understanding the key clinical points, lab techniques, all materials, patients, medical, physical, psychological and social well-being of the special needs and age patients and how that impacts on the dentures and success of those dentures. That's a mouthful. <laughs> so there's a lot of things that we as clinicians have to look at. It's not just open your mouth and we'll make your set of dentures. In the first appointment, our history taken is critical. So again, back to our exercise. Uh, we look at our overbite and overjet. Incorrect centric registration. Look at overbite overjet. Patient has moved protrusive of true centric. This is known as a habitual centric, so the patient normally goes there. They've slided into protrusive. So we have to rectify that. So again, we can see the correct centric that the patient can go to and the incorrect that they're used to by wearing the ditch long for so many years. So incorrect centric registration, not noticed by clinician, ready for lab, not noticed the trying, problems begin. Now how do you start to solve these problems? So it's critical that we're sure we know what we're looking for, especially at that particular point in trying. And again we see the patient uh, with a correct centric occlusion at insert. Just a quick brief look at the past to now for domiciliary services. Uh, the domiciliary services for DHSV, uh, th which is the outreach service, we can see Dr. Des Crack there's uh, converted a golf buggy to carry his uh, dental equipment. Dr. Bettelson there has converted a deck chair basically so he can use it as a dental chair. We've come closer to where I started into the domiciliary service in 2008, uh, the vans we were using at the time, the insides of the vans. The new domiciliary cars in 2011, basically a Ford station wagon. Our equipment trolley for the day 2011 carries all our equipment, our impression material, trays, gloves, everything we need. Uh, 
um, for the day to see our patients. It's very well thought out of. Now, domiciliary does not have these luxuries or space, so we've got to be very, very think lateral, laterally when we're on site. Our working area at times can be as small as 0.4 of a square metre, so we're only working in a very small confined area. Uh, patients in nursing home, they've got their lifestyle, their little bits and pieces around the place, their memorabilia, and we don't want to intrude too much in their space, so we just basically clear a little bit of space after we've asked for permission, and that's basically all we've got to work in. Oops. So why do we need this type of service? The issue of transport and mobility and working space, that's reason why. Now, our perception of mobility might be the use of cars, boats or bikes. Fantastic, isn't it? Mobility for the age of special needs patients. Mobility for the age of special needs patients. Again, they've got an electric chair, they're very lucky. Unfortunately, there's a patients or a group of patients that don't have, that don't have any freedom of mobility due to physical, emotional, medical issues. The domiciliary service is important in reaching these patients so they can receive oral health. It's a strange world as we, uh, that I was not aware of when I first joined this department, but to enter a world where you see uh, possibly a relative or an elderly person you might know as a friend, that they're basically stuck in these uh, nursing homes, they can't get out, um, and to see them dress up for their appointments with their tie and their suit, and they look forward to these appointments is an amazing experience, but it's also quite one that's uh, heart-wrenching. I can only do it two days a week, that's all I can do. So, as clinicians, when we go into a nursing home or a person's home, domiciliary setting, eh? And you look at these cupboards full of medicines and you're going to take a medical history. Where do you start? Honestly, I look at that cupboard and I go, we've got problems. And um, the first thing we do, we, have, we don't even look at the person's mouth, we start talking for about an hour and trying to find out what's going on in their lives, how we can help in their mouths. Before we get to their mouths, there's so many other issues we need to worry about and at times we have to say, look, let's start worrying about every other issue before we start giving you more problems to deal with. And that's the reality of it. What are these efforts for? So you can see the patient before and after. That's not a bad result. So the patient's been like that for quite a few years and we've ended up with a set of dentures like that. She's put on a little bit of makeup. She's quite happy for <laughs> the whole process, which is really nice. So in summary, in uh, age special needs patients, flexibility in approaching to treatment is essential for the practitioner. Knowledge and understanding of difficult patients has, so you must research all the areas that you don't understand. Try different methods to solve the problems. Now, copy replica denture technique is an option. You must keep, or I always keep that in the back of my mind because it's got me out of trouble so many times with these difficult cases. Be realistic in your own and your team's ability. Consult with colleagues if difficulties arise. So we're very lucky in the public sector. We've got a pool of people that have got a lot of knowledge, uh, as I said, in regards to denture and many, many other areas. And... Uh, in general conversation or when there's issues, we can um, talk about cases and uh, get a lot of information to try to help these patients. Um, and it's case uh, likely of adverse uh, result, be prepared to stop treatment and record reasons. So in other words, you might even get up to the trying stage and you start spotting issues. There's no point going any further. So you might as well stop there unless the patient is saying, no, I want to keep trying. So we've got to ensure patients' comfort during treatment. Look for patients' ability and disabilities. That's done right from the word go. Empathy and understanding for the patients and families is very important for practitioners and clinicians that are dealing with special needs patients. Discussions, discussions with our special needs patients. Obtaining oral health services as a patient with special needs and how patient felt about domiciliary service. Reluctance for some practitioners to treat special needs patients. Patients can become quite depressed, frustrated and possibly upset in the manner that they've been treated. 
At first, patients had reservations, did not know uh, how they could be treated in, at their home. But during after, and during and after treatment, appreciative, thankful, any reservations from domiciliary service soon disappeared. Some patients look forward to appointments also. Now, have we achieved the holistic restoration with copy replicate technique? In a majority of cases, great outcome is achieved, as close to patients' requirements as we can provide. And that's what inspires us to keep trying. Now, remember the mouth is an ever-changing environment, unfortunately with greater rate in the age and special needs patients. So we've got to know this fact that as the patients are getting older, we, as a clinician and uh, prosthetist, I don't always recommend that uh, when teeth are mobile for the, for the patients have extractions. We go to a partial denture first of all, see how they cope with that, and then move on to one extraction, add a tooth, and so forth. We don't do full clearances unless they're in pain. So in conclusion, there is no harm in copying the good functional aesthetics features of the well-made dentures and excluding the faults and improving on them. Um, there's also a famous uh, uh, philosopher saying there is no harm in doing a good thing. Plateau. Our age and special needs patients deserve the best care we can give. And it's important that uh, we as providers, especially these days, we don't go into facilities by ourselves. We have our dental assistant, we have uh, identification, uh, nursing staff is also present and we must record who we are and what we're doing there. There's many times uh, we've gone to first appointments and we've been confronted with, with oh, the patients had dentures made privately. Fantastic, are you happy? Yes, we are happy. So we go to record on their progress notes that we've presented there to do a checkup, and we obviously look for the previous notes of the practitioner, and guess what? There's nothing there. So we don't know who presented, we don't know, or the nursing home doesn't know who presented, who made the dentures, and there is no history in the nursing home. So it's important that uh, we provide the correct information. A new challenge for us, the prosthetists, in June 2013. Um, my thanks to all the dentists and dental technicians who supported me over the many years and given me a lot of uh, information and explanations greater than what was required for my skills to improve. Um, I also spent with some uh, time with Dr. Rasmussen, or Dr. Raz, or Razzie as he was known, to us students uh, during the mid-80s. So we thanked him a lot for the Waikiki wave in the lower denture stability. That's another topic, by the way. <laughs> All techniques require consultation with your dental laboratory prior to commencing of case and patient understanding of procedure. These are similar procedures for copy replica dentures are used at DHSV, Minus Health, Oral Health, Knox Community Health Group, providing patients with the highest quality of care and treatment for the public sector. Now, using procedures you're not familiar with can lead to failures and dis, uh, disasters. Skills require appreciation, time and understanding and effort to develop. And also asking clinicians for assistance doesn't hurt. So acknowledgements go to DHSV Integrated Special Needs Department, Monash Health Oral Health, University of RMIT, and DHSV for the archival photographs. Our references, thank you. Any questions? And behind these walls are people that care about your oral health.